I was lying in bed last night and it was actually early this morning and I believe it was right in between that state of consciousness and unconsciousness and I believe that God was speaking to me and I woke up, I became consciously aware of God saying to me, may your sores become your source. And I believe that he gave me those words and then he filled in the content. Now, what is a sore? A sore is something especially such as an ulcer with the tissues ruptured or abraded and usually with infection and that infection is a source of pain or vexation get in your mind the understanding of vexation unto glorification you appear vexed appear as if you have a wound, you have a festering sore. That's the way the world sees you. You may even see yourself that way, but you know, somehow you know that you will be glorified when all of this is over. May your sores become your source. You've been dwelling in that one place you know how you get complacent you've been in a space for so long until it has become the source of your vexation have you ever met someone like this have you ever met someone who seems to have the infection of dysfunction maybe you've said to yourself maybe you've been in that place and you've said to yourself I know that if I continue to lay in this place the sore will only get worse but I've gotten comfortable in pain so much so that it has become a part of my everyday life is there anything that has you vexed Vex means to shake up or toss about. It also has that meaning. As if you are being tossed about by every wind, every storm, every breeze. It just seems like you are unstable. I know you won't believe this, but the thing that has come to cause you pain the situation that has caused you to toss and turn has good in it. I know when you're going through it, you may not feel that way, but I want you to remember the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, how in the world could a tree have both good and evil in it at the same time? But I want to ask you, how will you allow the tree to affect you? What effect will it have on you? Or will you affect your tree? Your vexation comes from you getting to a particular point where a decision has to be made. And as you know, I like to go to the book of Genesis, I like to deal with Adam and Eve. I believe that there's still some low hanging fruit in the garden that we hadn't plucked yet. I believe that there's still some more meat in the book of Genesis. How could good be in the same place where there's bad? Well, God told them not to eat from the tree, but to gain knowledge from it. not to let the tree be their source of food but that the tree should be the place where you come to understand life 
I don't believe that we've come to understand the backdrop of the story clearly yet. We have knowledge of this particular story, but we haven't gained knowledge from it. Now, isn't that a theological dilemma? That's a situation where you see life, but you're not living in it. You hear about everybody else living, but I'm not enjoying life. How is it that I can read about what they did? I can use my imagination to see far off, but I'm not living in it. My hands can't touch it. You're telling me that is real, but it's not real to me. The woman had a deep theological conversation concerning that tree that not only changed her life, but changed the lives of everybody in her circle. And as we read the story, we start to realize that that tree became sort of a sword in the woman's life. And those of us who stopped reading there, we could even think that right there she was having a conversation with an object or with an image in that tree, that it was over for her, that her womb would take her out. That sore place in your life didn't come to infect you. It came to perfect you. It came to project you, to propel you, to cause you to consider some things deeply. You were looking at some things on the surface and then here comes that sore place that really just knocked you down. But all it did, it didn't really knock the life out of you. It just caused you to stand still for a minute. So that you can consider some things. So that you could walk on one from one side of the tree to the next. That you could examine this fruit from different angles. Sometimes we have to examine life. I want you to think about what really happened at that tree before we move on from it. I want you to take away all of these mythological images and symbols used to express the story that have become confusing to us and I want you to think about who was in that moment, who was thinking and what was going on in her mind. You see the tree represents your greatest moment of decision. We say she was standing at a tree. I want you to understand that she was standing looking at the cross. I don't know if you've been there yet because I'm not talking about a sword that can be treated by antibiotics. I'm talking about an experience that makes you question God himself and everything else you've ever learned. This thing that I'm talking about makes you curse the very ones who gave birth to you. You curse mama and daddy and it makes you even hate your hometown. I hate everything that they ever told me. When you get in this particular situation, when you get infected, when you get vexed with this type of wound I'm talking about. Eve was in a place where she was alone and by herself. At that moment, even though her husband was there, he was not relevant to her story. What she was going through was bigger than Adam. What she found out through that experience made her the teacher and it made Adam the student. It took the tail and repositioned the tail to the head. I'm talking about roles being reversed. That's why Adam ate without question. We look at the story and we think about why or how in the world did Adam just take that particular fruit 
from the forbidden tree and eat it without question. I'll tell you why. Because of the knowledge that Eve had from the so-called wound made her the master and Adam the student. She became the head and Adam became the tail. We're talking about something deeper than flesh and blood in case you hadn't realized it yet. We're talking about experience over vision. We're talking about seeing everything but having nothing. We're talking about being in the company of others but still alone. How in the world could Eve be with her husband or be with Adam? Cause he wasn't even her husband yet I want you to keep that locked in your mind That although they were together Although she came from Adam Adam wasn't her husband yet Have you ever been a prisoner In another world Your body being in one place But your mind in another I'm telling you that God Has something so great for you that is going to change your life. It's going to make relationships change. It's going to change the course of your life. If you listen to what I have to tell you today. Those who once ruled you will be your subjects. Those you used to follow will now look to you for direction. And that's what happened when your soul the very thing that vexed you becomes your source you know sometimes we don't take the time to imagine and really understand what was going on between the first representatives of life Adam and Eve were the first representatives of life not that they were the first ones on the planet but because of this story and how it was compiled they are the first representatives of life on earth Adam and his wife Eve we hadn't understood yet what was going on what could have caused Eve to be right there with her husband but alone we see this story through symbols and images, blinded by the symbols and confused by the images. But the message hasn't spoken to us in a way that we can understand the woman's vexation. We're talking about apples and oranges. As a matter of fact, we're not even comparing apples and apples because we talking about apples and serpents and trees but the actual message is about having the ability to see everything but unable to touch anything how can you see everything but nothing is practical nothing has become practical empirical knowledge for you but you see everything I have access to everything but I can't enjoy the experience you don't know what type of mess that is for me we understand so on the body but has your spirit ever been vexed like Eve's spirit was possible have you ever been at a crossroad? Adam and Eve were less than men at this point. They were like the angels. What do you mean that Adam and Eve were less than men at this point, but they were like the angels? Aren't the angels greater than man? Let me show you some stuff. If you be patient with me, I'll show you something. They knew all things, Adam and Eve, but they lacked experience. They were like God. They could see everything, 
but they were experienced in nothing. They hadn't even experienced childbirth. They had been made alive, but they hadn't been born again. You see, we missed the point right there. We can't put ourselves in their perspective because we are physical beings right now. Just as we can have not life for lacking the vision, they were not alive because they lacked the experience of life. You don't understand what it means to have a kingdom mind but a box mentality because you ain't been nowhere yet. You haven't even left your hometown yet. All you know is what mom and daddy used to tell you and what the neighbors back there in that little small town. All you know is what your husband been telling you so far. I'm talking about once you come into the understanding, you get mad with everybody who held you captive for so long. One of our challenges in this world is that we must get out of the flesh and into the spirit. But what vexed Adam and Eve is that they were living and they could see according to the spirit, but they hadn't been made flesh yet. They were alive, but they weren't living. Adam and Eve could see things, but they couldn't touch them because they hadn't yet started living. You say, how can that be minister? Well, listen while I tell you something. They were both in the garden, but they hadn't become one yet. Listen, watch this because here's a slight shift. He was in the world, but the world knew him not. Adam and Eve were together in the garden, but they weren't even talking to each other. They were living in the same house. Tell me if this sounds like somebody. They were living in the same house, but they didn't know each other. They weren't even talking to each other because they weren't able to communicate with each other because they were traveling on different paths. I'm going to make this clear for you in a minute. Although Eve came from Adam, watch this, they didn't know Christ. I want you to hear that subtle shift. Eve came from Adam, but they didn't know Christ. Although they came from him, they didn't know him. Who am I talking about right here? Although they came from him, Adam and Eve didn't have a relationship with him. They didn't have a relationship with each other. I want you to go back to the story. They did not have a relationship with each other until after the experience. That's when they fell in love. I don't know if you were able to see that shift in the story. I believe you probably was caught up too much in the images and the symbols. I believe you were thinking about a physical serpent and you couldn't see the story. You didn't recognize that the man had been calling the woman only the woman, he didn't even know her name until after the experience. I want you to go back and read your story and see if I'm telling you something that's not true. Watch this. Adam and Eve didn't even have love until after the experience. That's when they fell in love and started having babies.
I know you missed that point, but that's why I'm taking it slow for you because I want to reteach you this story. That's when Adam stopped calling her the woman and he started calling her Eve. Isn't that how it happens? You might know your particular mate by one name when you first meet them. And then once you get to know them fully in ways that no other man or woman knows that person, you can call them by some special names. And that's exactly why I'm telling you what I'm telling you. Because before the experience, Adam didn't know that Eve was walking around with a kingdom in her. Eve had a city in her mind, but her husband was causing her to live in a tree house. Adam had the two of them in a situation where Adam was telling Eve that they had everything. Baby, we have everything. What else could you possibly want? And Eve was telling Adam that we don't have nothing. You haven't looked at the story clearly. I know that there had to have been an argument going on because Eve found a complete stranger to talk to who could understand her. Eve called up mama. Eve called up one of her friends, Eve, went to the tree instead of to her husband. Maybe she had already been trying to talk to him on a higher level, but he was listening, but he couldn't hear. Eve had transcended Adam's understanding, and he and she had confused and frustrated Adam. Because Eve had a city in her. She had a kingdom. She was kingdom minded. Although we thought she was wounded. Have you ever been around someone. And they were trying to make you satisfied with a little bit. They were bragging about living amongst the trees. The reason I'm telling you that. Adam and Eve were living amongst the trees is because I don't believe Adam and Eve had a house. Sort of like when Jesus said that foxes have holes and dens and the Son of Man doesn't have any place to lay his head although the Son of Man has access to everything. I wonder if Jesus was talking about what was available for his use but have you ever had people trying to cause you to be happy with a little bit you living amongst the trees but you have a city inside of you a kingdom that the people don't even know about and they trying to excite you about a little shack Eve was saying to herself I know good and well deep down in my heart that there's more to living than where we're living at because Eve already knew who she was even before Adam called her name. So when we hear that Adam named the animals, we should try to understand what Adam actually saw. God brought the animals to Adam. Adam saw the physical kingdom Adam represented the physical kingdom and that's why God brought the animals to him to see what he should call them and when he started naming the animals Adam named what represented the physical kingdom he only saw a limited amount of animals so in essence, Adam was only able to see a representation because the kingdom was buried in him. The spirit.
spiritual kingdom was yet to come through him. So watch this. When God brought the animals to Adam, Adam could name them, he could see them, but there was none who represented man amongst the animals. At that point, Eve had not been taken from Adam yet. The separation or the identification had not even started. Because Eve was in Adam, that's why we have the story saying that the man had to be put to sleep for the spiritual to be born. The physical man had to be put to sleep. Although Adam was living, he hadn't really, really been born yet. Paul said this was the first Adam, meaning that when you can see the representation, but you lack the relationship through the experience. I know for certain that the God in me tells me that it's real. But what's confusing me is the earth man has to touch it. I have to be able to live in it, Adam. I know that there's a city in me, but without the experience, I feel like I'm living like the animals. Adam, Eve is saying, I live in the world, but I don't even know about life. And although where you have positioned me and what you are able to provide me, although this is good, and we have all kinds of animals living out here, I need so much more than just this life that you can offer. So if we get back into the reading of the story, we'll see that Adam named the animals. He named them according to what his eyes could see. But the woman who was to come from him, she was going to populate the world with some stuff that the eyes could not see. Adam identified those things which were already. But when Eve, I believe you kind of see that this is in reference to the spirit because once the spirit comes, that's when the man is able to see the things that are not seen. On the one hand, Adam named the visible but the one who lived inside of him was the mother of the invisible. So we might even go as far as to say that Adam named the animals, but God named the woman. How in the world could it be that I'm telling you that God named the woman when the Bible clearly says that Adam called the woman Eve. Well, let me show it to you. I don't mind showing it to you. I don't mind if you think I'm off course and then later on you find out that I had a plan all the while. I was never off track. I had never stumbled because I want to open your eyes to something. Even Eve knew she was the mother of all the living. Let me tell you a little secret. Eve knew she was the mother of all the living before Adam did. So that's how I know Adam couldn't have named her first. Adam just repeated what he heard. Adam repeated what he saw. 
Adam repeated what was revealed to him. This is when Eve was getting ready to start. Eve was starting to speak then. Adam started feeling something on the inside of him then. He started hearing from the inside now. But I'm here to tell you that Eve knew before Adam uttered it with words that she was the mother of all the living. And watch this. The things that she was really giving birth to, those things came before she even started having babies. So that's how I know we're not talking about the physical. So yes, I, I mean, I, I understand that this stuff might confuse you a little bit. I understand that this is a little bit deeper than what you can handle. But this is exactly what happens to you when you are led by the vision. The experience when you are led by the vision, the experience will soon come. The reason the two of them hadn't produced anything together is because although the woman came from the man, she was not yet his wife. And I believe right there you're trying to tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about. You saying how is it that you can say that this woman came from Adam, they were living together, but she was not yet his wife. Well, when you get to understand the story fully, you'll see that sometimes when you are walking in glory, it looks like you are wounded. The reason it looks like you are wounded sometimes is because I believe we end up in the same situation that Eve ended up in. Eve, I believe, was saying, I know that once I release this thing that is in me, once I take from this tree, it's going to turn neighbor against neighbor brother against sister, mother against father. I know it's going to make me covet the very things that my neighbors have. I know it's going to cause us to kill each other over some little physical things. But with all the power I have, I can't stop life from happening. I have to give birth to what's on the inside of me. I want to get out and live on my own, Adam. I want to see, I want to feel, and I want to touch the things that I've been looking at. Sometimes seeing things off in a distance is not good enough. It's not good enough to just look at everything and have access to everything, being able to see everything, I want to live in it too. And so she took a bite and then she gave Adam a taste of that physical stuff. She gave Adam a bite of the world that was living in her. And after he took a bite, that's when they became one. I believe what I'm getting ready to say here will make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. But when Eve ate from that tree, the story has Adam and Eve becoming one. But I want to tell you the deeper meaning. At that moment, the actual joining together have to listen to this I'm telling you the hair on the back of your neck is gonna stand up you might get offended before you get educated you might get upset before you get liberated you may even stop listening to the video when I tell you this that the two who became one at that point superseded the man and the woman who were the symbols of this higher knowledge. But the two who became one 
was God and man. Glory, hallelujah. This is the point where God and man became one. The spirit and the flesh became a living being. This is where the God-man was born. Adam and Eve were just characters used to relate to our physical understanding. You know, these people who told these stories were spiritual people and they knew that they would be talking to carnal-minded people. And so they use the union of man and woman, husband and wife to talk about the spirit and man, the spiritual things and the carnal things coming together. The authors of the story of Genesis were concrete thinkers. They didn't understand abstract thought. So they use physical symbols and images to describe ethereal and corporeal or tangible. So what's being identified here is the union of those physical things with what is unseen. And the two became one in the God man if you don't believe what I'm telling you I want you to go back and read the story for yourself God said the man has now become like one of us but we don't even read that sentence right because we've been blinded by the image the man has become like one, the man has become one of, meaning he comes from us, man has become one with us. Jesus said it all the way in the New Testament. Jesus said, God is with us. I'm telling you we've been blinded by the image. We have become one in Christ. If you give me a little bit more time I'm going to explain to you the deception of paradise and then I'll close this out. So we often wonder how it is that Adam and Eve could be kicked out of paradise. How is it that they could not dwell in paradise? So I'm going to explain to you the deception of paradise without the experience. And if I explain this to you, then you'll understand the fall. Well, paradise is living in a vision without the effects of the nuances. So in a sense, without the nuances of life, without the experience, you are just going through the motions. You are able to see the entire picture, that's true. But you miss the process of how the image was formed. You admire the picture. You admire the painting of the artist. But you don't know the process of bringing the actual picture to life. You don't know what all it took for me to produce this masterpiece. You are admiring the writing on the wall but you didn't have to go through the process so it's almost like you just
going through the motions when you are living in paradise, but you've never had the experience that it takes for you to actually live there. And so that's how Adam and Eve fell because they didn't go through the nuances of life. You have to go through the process in order for you to understand life. You go through the process so you can be called up higher to paradise. So you admire the pain. And you don't even understand its value because you can't even contemplate the price of the process. There's some certain things that you can't even fathom when you start trying to think about how the image was formed, how this image that we are reading in the Bible, how God was able to say that the man has now become one of us. You can see it all, but you can experience none of it. Having access, but it doesn't belong to you. We can't understand why they did what they did in the garden. When you have access to everything, I want you to get this before I go. When you have access to everything, nothing exists. You're not really, really hearing what I'm saying to you. You may be hearing, but I don't know if you're able to listen to this. I need you to stop doing what you're doing for a second and pay attention to this so you will hear me talk about God. Stop moving around. Stop washing dishes. Stop clapping your hands. Stop stumping your feet. Stop talking and listen to this. I'm getting ready to talk about God right now. I want you to hear me talk about God and it all is going to take me as a second. When you have access to everything, I'm telling you, nothing exists. When you have everything, nothing matters. Don't you know that I'm telling you the truth that nothing matters to those who have everything? Why is it that famous actors and actresses and singers and Athletes can have everything and then lose their lives. How can you be miserable with everything? Let me tell you something. That's why the angels were questioning God about man. Why or how could you give them what you gave them? You didn't even give that to us. I'm talking about God now. That's why Adam and Eve did what they did. Because it's not until you can lose something that everything else that you have matters. Why is it do you think that millionaires don't start appreciating things until they start losing some things? What I'm talking to you about today is not about two people in a garden. What I'm talking to you about today is God living in man. I want to talk to you about God becoming man so that man could know God. But I don't believe that you will understand that. I don't believe that you could process that. So I won't talk to you about it that deep on that deep of a level. But I'll just tell you about when God joined himself with man so that God could have man's experience. How in the world could the man and the woman live in paradise and experience hell? Because paradise is hell without the experience. 
you only living with a vision of all of these things. But like the angels, you can't touch anything. We don't even understand fully what God has done for us. We have been glorified and by the experience, we are greater than the angels because we have been glorified. Without the experience, then glorification doesn't even exist. And that's what separates us from the angels. And that's the very reason why the Bible calls us gods is because of the experience. God himself knows that you could be living in paradise, but if you take away the experience, we would feel like we are living in hell. You can see everything, but you can enjoy nothing. I know you thought that was just bad grammar by me saying that you can't enjoy nothing. But I'm telling you that you can't enjoy having nothing. So that wasn't a typo. That wasn't bad grammar. But what I'm telling you is that if you're going to enjoy something, then you're gonna have to experience something. And if you don't have anything to experience, then you can't enjoy what you don't have. If I felt that you would be okay with it, I'll tell you why God created everything. Even God doesn't enjoy nothing. So if your religion tells you to be happy with nothing you are listening to the devil if your religion I want you to hear this again and again I have to go but if you are listening to some religious tongues that are telling you to be happy with nothing then you listening to the devil because it is the devil and the devil only who has taken everything from man. In Jesus' temptation, we read that the devil could show Jesus all the kingdoms of the world, but he could give him nothing. That's what's going on in the garden, even to this day. The vision and the experience hadn't been joined together yet. When you have the vision and all you have is the vision, and all you can do is see it, but have not the experience, then it feels like you are living in hell. Everybody else see you as in paradise, but you yourself, you feel like you in hell because your paradise is preventing you from living because you see all of this stuff. Adam and Eve, but they hadn't lived without what happened at that tree. They hadn't yet been wounded, so they couldn't be glorified. You have on the one hand, the experience without vision. You have hell. It's not until God's vision is joined with the man's life that you really start living. You don't understand what I'm saying to you. Even though I'm taking it slow for you. It's only in the Christ man that the vision and the experience comes together. That's why Jesus said, I come that you may have life because God and man has been joined together as one. I know you thought we were only talking about Adam and Eve, didn't you? I know when we started off, you thought I was just talking about Adam and Eve. Adam represents the experience and Eve represents the vision. It wasn't until Adam 
understood the vision that he was then able to call the woman by the name Eve because he started to recognize that the mother of all the living lived first in Adam. But the sore comes, watch this, the sore comes, the vexation comes before the glorification. God had to put Adam to sleep. Even though the kingdom was living in the man, the man was living without the experience of the kingdom. The kingdom wasn't even alive to the man until he became vexed. When God knocked the man down on his back, that's when the man could get up. When the man had this festering soul, that's when the man was able to be glorified. God put Adam to sleep. And that's when Eve, the mother of all the living, came to life. I hope that you got something from the message and I'm going to end this with a scripture from Paul. The scripture comes from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 42 through 49. This is what Paul says. This is how it will be when the dead are raised to life. When the body is buried, it is mortal. When raised, it will be immortal. When buried, it is ugly and weak. When raised, it will be beautiful and strong. When buried, it is a physical body. When raised, it will be a spiritual body. There is, of course, a physical body, so there has to be a spiritual body. For the scripture says the first man, Adam, was created a living being, but the last Adam is the life-giving spirit. It is not the spiritual that comes first, but the physical, and then the spiritual comes. The first Adam made of earth came from the earth. The second Adam came from heaven. Those who belong to the earth are like the one who was made of earth. Those who are of heaven or like the one who came from heaven. Just as we wear the likeness of the man made of earth, so we will wear the likeness of the man from heaven. So now, let us come to understand who we really are. Man represents the limitations of the spirit. I want you to hear me clearly. Man represents the limitations of the spirit. I didn't stutter. Man is the representation of the limitations of the spirit. And watch this. Although the spirit is everywhere all at once and knows all things, the spirit can experience no thing without man experiencing everything that God has for man. I'm going to say that again so you can understand what this entire message was about. Man represents the limitations of the spirit. The spirit is everywhere all at once and knows all things. But the spirit can experience no thing without man experiencing everything that God has. Man. Everything that 
the spirit has to offer man was created to have those things so don't you ever let anybody tell you that God's desire is for you to have limited things because the very reason God created the world is because God was not happy when there was nothing when there was nothing to give to man God created everything so that when he creates man everything that God had created would be available for man glory hallelujah 